Good morning folks, welcome back, I hope you're keeping well. It's uh, not long after sunrise, just about 6am now. I've actually come out to the same place I was at last time. I'm in a totally different part of it. Some be just beautiful, beautiful little areas of woodland. It's very difficult for me to describe really how this is made up. But, I mean even this, I'm not far from the car right now and just walking up here you've got this this little flock of silver birch and when you get so many together in one place like this it's quite mesmerizing really really beautiful and then just over here somewhere we have oaks some huge oaks actually so i'll be headed over there in a little while i've got a few hours here today and that's by design really i am um, what have i uh in this last few weeks I've just come to realise that my photography has been suffering. My photography has been suffering on the days I've been recording for YouTube. And I don't blame YouTube, it's not their fault. <laughs> I kind of blame myself really. I think all it is is that the actual act of recording these videos and carrying the extra gear with you and needing extra batteries and all the thinking that, that goes with it, all the not so much planning because I don't do a whole lot of it but just the just the act of recording it takes up a lot of your brain space it takes up a lot of my brain space as a result there's less of me for the photography so I've just noticed the number of shots I come away with is reduced quite significantly and I don't feel as rewarded that's the real problem I don't feel as satisfied with my photography when I've been out recording for YouTube so that's all it is. Today, I'm not going to get into any great waffle. No history lessons, no coffee. I'm just out to, to grab some shots of this amazing place. And I want to take the shots that I would normally take for myself. I shoot for myself. And I want to make today about that. I'm going to try and record it as well. But it's going to be in that order today. So it'll be a bit different. And what a place to be. It's beautiful this morning. It's like eight degrees, lovely and cool. Quite windy, but I've come out to buckets of trees, so I'm going to have some shelter. The heather's out. Look at this beautiful lilac. Absolutely amazing. And I know the GoPro just won't show it up, but uh, it's really beautiful, believe me. I'll try and get a few shots, even just casual shots to pop up, just to, just to show you the colour, the vibrancy of it. It's really, really beautiful. And I'm going to try and avoid sky. Can't guarantee it, but that's my goal. Slightly more intimate shots, shooting for myself. So without any further ado, I'm going to get a wiggle on, mooch about, break my camera out straight away, and I'm going to start clicking that shutter. So we'll see what happens. As I get anything worth sharing, I shall of course bring you back. So I'll see you in a bit. Over there somewhere. Oh, it's windy, so I shan't keep you. Um, oh, I'm loving the sky this morning. It's, some, it's a beautiful pale blue. I'm not crying. I just I've got so much cold wind in my face. It's making the tears stream. Um, it's very odd because the sun's coming up from over there, yet the brightness is up in the opposite direction. So it's like adverse light at the moment it's kind of coming from both sides there's no shadows being cast that was all said in one breath wasn't it and i was going to slow down <sighs> composition i've gone into a portrait orientation because i want to try and make something of this heather leading a trail through thank you through the frame up to the top top one third issue being obviously the sky so that's <sighs> I can't, in a single exposure, make the light adequate to expose the sky well and the, the heather in this trail. 
So what it's going to mean doing is taking two shots. I'll take an exposed shot of the sky, which will be something like that, where you can see the ribbons of cloud and the changing colour. And then I'll expose for the trail, which will be something more like that, where we've got the heather and the path and the tree without any great highlights or any great shadows. It's a feel for a deal, truthfully. The more you look at the histogram, the better you become at evaluating a multi-shot exposure blend, which is what I'm talking about doing here. It's a two-shot, possibly three-shot exposure blend. It takes some effort. It's not, a, it's not a simple, straightforward thing. You have to play with it and you have to shoot well. I'll do my business and then I'll pop that image up now rather than at the end, just so that it it falls in sequence. Beautiful, beautiful path. There's some lovely, uh, like, lighter yellows dotted around, and then the obvious the violet purple colour of all this in bloom heather. It's absolutely stunning. Really is beautiful this year. So, this is a two or possibly three shot exposure blend to expose the heather and this trail. The trees in the mid ground and then the clouds off up in the sky in the background. We'll see. Right, I'm gonna turn away from the sun, dry my, dry my eyes, mate, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. I think, I think, <laughs> what do I think? I think it's really important that we take our time, even at the cost of not recording video. It's a very, it's a very strange dilemma because they're both creative acts. So on one hand you're creating video and it's a, it's quite a, cool thing I really enjoy it as do many other I'm sure many youtubers by definition but uh, photographers generally because it's another visual creative tool and it's different to what we're used to and many of us haven't been in the videography game for decades you know we understand the concepts and we understand the technology perhaps but it's a very different craft it's a very different art I guess I have kind of a an eagerness to capture video. I suppose my natural temperament for photography is to be quite relaxed, less rushed, less eager. I have a patience for photography that I don't have for videography. And I'm learning this, I'm learning it very slowly. And uh, the two are quite a difficult combination to mix. It's fun, don't get me wrong. I really enjoy it, I like the challenge. <sighs> but it's no good if your photography suffers. It's no good if one trumps the other. Pardon that rather sensitive word right now. That's as political as I want to get. So, slow down. That's what I'm telling myself. Take your time, chill out, wait for the light, the sun's coming up. That's stunning, Zach. I feel like I need to focus more of my attention on the photography because it demands it you know it demands that you pay attention to composition and you think about what you're doing and you don't see without time I don't I don't know any photographers that can go into an environment and just pick the compositions take the shots and leave it doesn't work that way it's just not it's, that's not how fluid it is it's um, very considered and needs to be done with patience. I guess that's going to be the subject for this video. See, I've come out and I don't even know what I'm recording. And it's not comfortable, but it is probably what I need to do more of. Okay. So, challenging, need to pay more attention, need to give it more time, need to focus more on my photography. And that's what I should do. So, 
let's turn some attention to the uh, current environment. In this location, in this place, I'm on the, uh, we've got Shield Forest National Nature Reserve and then above it, there's almost a, a, a double area and that's this, this area, this heathland, this ancient heathland. And it's a mixture of ancient woodland and heathland. So very close to how this environment would have been back in around 1000 AD, CE, AB, C, CDE, about a thousand years ago. It's magical. I can't say it any other way. It's, it's absolutely magical. It just occurred to me, you know, I'm going to go back and then we'll go forward. I'm just going to go back and say, on my last video, I was at this heathland and I went down to the southern side, grabbed a coffee and then sauntered in, picked up a few shots, none of which were particularly great, none of which satisfied me at all. And that's what's spurred me on to come back because I know how diverse this place is and I didn't do it justice. I didn't pay it enough attention. And that's what's made me think about what am I doing, you know? If I'm not paying my photography enough attention, I shouldn't be making videos. I shouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. In my mind, anyway. No great shake, just... Oh, man. You've got to do it. You've got to do it justice. So that's it. No more. Done. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to head off down there. I've got the sun behind me. I've got the trees in front of me. And that's one of the problems with this environment, is the sky. Because the trees are quite spread out, like here, I'd love to take a wide shot of these guys, but it's just on a blanket of blue, and it doesn't do them justice. I can't, I can't photograph that on a blue screen. It's not good. If I drop down and try and cut out, every shot here looks like every other shot here. It's heather, it's fern, it's treeage. So this presents its own unique problems. And to get creative here is quite a challenge, unless you get in close. And then you can start and get creative with backlight and, you know, little kinks in the fern or things that the eye just catches that are unusual. But to do that, you have to be stationary. You have to study the environment. And um, that's what I'm doing a little bit of right now. So I'm going to mooch around a little bit here just before I head off into these trees. Check out a few casual shots just grab things that draw my eye. I like the backlight on this heather. I have to take a shot of this. Sorry about the hairy finger. If I can get myself in close enough to just grab a view through there and pick up the contrast, that's the difficulty. Then I might have a shot. The sun's up and it's staying up for a while. But it's lovely and cool today. Might have to bang the wide light. Mm-hmm. That's the way. And then once we've done that, I'm going to uh, grab a few shots. Intimacy. Let's get intimate. I feel like a bit of hot chocolate needs to come on now, but copyright strike, you know. This sun's playing games with me. It's popping in and out of thin clouds, so as the sun comes up, it's diffused, and then all of a sudden it becomes real bright, and then it, it, within seconds it, it dies, dives behind another cloud, so I just can't, <clears throat> can't predict the light. This is an interesting little shot. I'm going to try and cut out the sky, and just, just leave that oak tree there in centre of frame, and capitalise on the squiggle of this path. The beautiful heather lining the path off up into the woods with this one oak tree in the centre of frame. That's the theory anyway. And what we've got is landscape orientation. As I mentioned, the oak tree there is bang centre of frame. But this squiggly path curves its way, winds its way up and disappears off into the trees. But it looks as if it's visiting this oak. So the eyes drawn that way is a stereotypical S curve. I'm not a huge fan of them. I've touched on this in previous videos. I like to find compositions that, that twist rules. This doesn't, this is kind of, it's a money shot really. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But 
I'd like some additional content or less content. I'd like I'd like something to be obscure about the composition. Maybe the heather is. I don't know. Post processing will do its job. I'll find out more about it when I get it onto uh, onto the PC. But a nice, a nice, a beautiful place. I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Cutting out the sky is the big deal. So getting it to a point where that oak in centre of frame just just loses the sky and then that emphasizes the s it's so beautiful but this light is uh <laughs> it's gone <laughs> and it's not coming back sun's up there just behind this cloud you see how fast that's moving it's really traveling at a rate of knots but it's coming from over there and over there it's just a big blanket of uh of cloud certainly for the next at least half an hour if not for the rest of the day so i'm going to pick my gear up move off into these trees and see what else we can find interesting isn't it i'll pop it up at the end see you in a bit the lights died completely now no great shock i'm, I'm grateful that i had that little bit of sun to be honest that was a nice surprise, but uh, yeah, I think we're done now for sun. So what I'm going to do here is, it's a beautiful place. <sighs> I keep saying it down, I'm sorry. There's, this, there's another trail here, a squiggly little thing. Um, but I love, I just love the mix here of fern and heather and the oak trees. Shame about that bit of sky, but I'm not going to worry too much. Because what I'm going to do... As I, as I sweep around there, is it just it might make for a really nice pano, just kind of giving that sweeping shot of here. I don't know how that's going to translate to a photograph. I've got no real idea. So it's a bit of a punt. What I'm going to do so that I can increase my shutter speed is I'm going to up my ISO. Let's go to 400. Very much a feel for a deal in this light, and it's so changeable. Literally, by the time I've taken that shot, as I work my way around here, the light's going to have changed, so it could look like bright on one side and dull on the other. But, hey, whatever. I'm going to drop down to f8. That's going to allow me to go 1 60th of a second, f8, ISO 400. Don't want to go too far over in that direction because we get sky and it's not particularly interesting. So I'll start off my first frame with that oak at the top centre. Uh, I'm manually focused. Just go to the back of where it's in focus. So let's take some shots instead of waffling on. So that's the first one. So now as I move my camera around, I want to have a fair amount of this heather over here. So something along those lines. I'm going to take my next shot. Something marking this edge wants to be on this side. Something on this edge. I'll do one more. And that'll give me crop options. So that's it. It's just just a bit different. I like a good pano, especially when the light's challenging because it allows you to extract the little light that's there. So by that I mean where there are highlights within a wider frame, you can pull them up in post-processing, and where there are shadows, you've got you've got more real estate there's more within that composite shot to play with and that that can help you when the light's challenging i find right i'm going to carry on down here for a bit i don't have any great ambitions for many more shots to be honest i've been quite productive this morning so thinking about what i've what i've been doing and where i've been concentrating my effort has really helped it's helped it's helped me feel a bit more satisfied at least even if my shots aren't great i at least feel productive <laughs> Right, just want to use this video to set a stake in the ground and say 
I'm going to be concentrating more on my photography from now on and I'll share that with you and hopefully the more of that I do the better I'll get at it the more informative my photography can become and that might just help somebody at some point in time <laughs> who knows <laughs> anyway I think for today that's going to be me folks I'm going to call it a wrap so it's a big jug of coffee when I get back bacon eggs mushrooms tomatoes right so for today that's me it's a wrap thank you very much for watching please take care of one another and as ever if you can't be good just be careful i'll see you soon bye for now You can have it. Do you want it? There's plenty.